Welcome back to Rotten and Forgotten. Today, we're gonna be working on some lands. I know, who would have thought? Well, anyways, we got issues going on. Now, these two lands have something in common. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. They're both yellow. They're both skidoos. They both have tracks, and you know, you guys are right on all accounts. But they both have plastic hoods, which, you know, whatever, but both the hoods are cracked. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. How do you break two land hoods? What are you doing? Are you beating on them? Well, the short answer is yes. The long answer is, I've been busy training in the next generation of land riders, you know, the little people. And it's been going pretty darn good. This one we beat on a couple weeks back. We rode a good day and, you know, minor details, cracked the hood, whatever. It was cracked before that anyways. It don't matter, you know, this is a beater. That's what it's meant for. Now the pretty one on the other hand, we just cracked that last week. So that was, you know, unexpected. I gotta give him props, you know, the little guy was making his laps. He got one lap down. I mean, just flawless execution, doing three miles an hour, you know. And he was going for a second lap and he just got her on a little bit too much of an edge and tipped her over, which who hasn't tipped any land over? If you've ever rode one, you probably have. I've tipped over at least a hundred times or more but he tipped her over on the gravel and the hood didn't like it. So, in short, we got a front patch to fix here on the hinge, you know, where they like to crack, and we got a side panel crack. Now, you could go online and find another hood, you know, that Ron Goose guy, he sells them, I think they're like being near 400 bucks. Fresh plastic mold though, I mean, it'd be pretty sweet, but I don't have that kind of money to burn. So, we got two options, and I'll show them to you. Starting off with option one here is an Amazon special, and it's a plastic welder. Basically, it's just a hot iron that's extremely basic. Get it real hot, add some plastic material in your crack, some meshing if you really need it, and you know, you fix it. Now over on our second subject, we have option number two. Now this is an actual plastic welder, you pay an extra couple dollars for it, but it's got, you know, blue and clippers and stuff. The way this one works, it's actually a hot staple gun, they call it. So you get these little staples in a kit, and you put them in the end of that, and it makes the staples red hot, and you press them into the plastic. It's pretty simple. These cracks are going to be kind of a doozy. This hinge one goes from bolt hole A all the way over to bolt hole C. So, you know, that's a main stress point. Now, I was with, and we cracked this one, hit a hard snowbank, and she just, you know, cracked. I have patched this one before, but it has since, you know, expanded. We also have a hairline crack up here. We're not gonna worry about that too much. There's a crack up by the headlight, too. You know, these old plastic hoods, they just get brittle. And when you ride them like a maniac, you're gonna end up with a cracked hood. Now for the side panel crack, it's kind of a doozy. We got some pretty nasty runs going all the way up. We got another nasty run with the triangle cracked out, but I think we're gonna be able to make it pretty darn close. Right when it cracked, I threw some duct tape on there so we could keep riding for the day. You know, you can't let something like this slow you down, especially when the weather's great and there's sleds to be pulled. To get this project underway, we have to remove the hood. It's just gonna make life a lot easier. To remove a 73 hood, you just have to unplug your wires, clip your cable ties if you have any, remove the hood tie cable thing, and take your front screws out. It shouldn't go too bad. Luckily for me, the screws are, you know, spinning in the plastic grommets, so this is gonna get a lot more fun. We got three to go. It shouldn't go too bad, though. We'll get a pliers of some sort in there and hold on to them. It'll be fun. Lots and lots of fun. Maybe I can spin them off by hand, too. It's hard to see. If that doesn't sound like a screw stripping, I don't know what does sound like one. A 
If you're by yourself at home trying to get your hood off, you can use a flathead screwdriver and apply a little bit of pressure on the back of the head. That'll pull that grommet into the metal a little better and it can, you know, maybe come off if you're lucky. If the screwdriver trick doesn't help you, a vice grip will do the job. You just put it on the back of that grommet, clamp it down, and it'll, you know, come out, whether it wants to or not. There. Removed. Very carefully. We're going to start out by removing our tape and starting to line up pieces. Ideally, you don't want to use Gorilla Tape because that stuff really sticks. But I knew I wasn't going to get to it for a day or two, so that's what I used, that's what I had, that's what I did. Gorilla tape doesn't come off very nice, but it does stick very well. Yikes. Now you can see this crack is pushed inside the hood a little bit. I'm going to carefully try to get it to realign where it's supposed to be. It's got a little bit of an edge towards the inside, so it may not want to go very well. We may have to actually pull it out a little or push this in, I'm not sure exactly which. Oh, it is stoutly stuck. There it went. Okay, I got the crack kind of in place where I want it. I'm gonna go grab that hot staple gun and start working around trying to get everything lined up decently. Once I get that done, I'll come back over with a hot iron and just smush her in add some material and make her, you know, as good as new or attempt to. I'm not sure how it's going to go. You know, there's a lot of cracks going on with this one. So it's going to add on to the complications, but I think it should go pretty decent. I shouldn't say things like that. As for this crack, I'm not too worried about in the front. That'll go good. Now, this is my first time using one of these. This is an all turn. I don't know anything about it. It was on Amazon. I clicked it, it looked easy to use. You just load the staples in them and pull the trigger from what I understand. Now don't be pulling the trigger and holding your finger on there. You're getting up with a burnt finger. It should heat up rather fast. It's a little staple and you just let her melt in a little bit. But you don't want to go too far, otherwise you'll go right through the other side. This could be a learning experience for the both of us. So yeah. Let's try her out. Where's the crack even at? Oh, it's up here. You hold the button, and push her into place. Oh, that goes easy. And I don't know how you undo it. Just pull it away. Now you gotta let it melt a little. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, that went pretty good. Got a little close to going through. Not too bad though. That's gonna, you know, not be too hard. Now my plan is to just kind of hit this main spot where all the cracks separate from each other, get that tied in and then work the edges out until we get, you know, a nice finish. But to be honest, I have no idea what I'm doing. So we'll see what it ends up looking like. I know it's gonna be a heck of a lot cheaper than buying a new hood and then we can, you know, crash again and not worry about it. Throw some more staples in, fix it. Send her down the road.
Starting with our front crack, we got that patch with five staples. Now a guy could have cleaned up on the hood a little bit more and made our surfaces nicer and more prepped. I didn't do that. Over here on the side is where the real artwork begins. You can see this triangle here. That was completely busted out and just dangling. But I kind of went with a mismatch configuration of staples, trying to get them held in there. Takes a little bit of time, but you know, we're back to being a 10 footer hood that is. You get up to about five feet, you can start to see the blemishes and the cracks, but that doesn't matter. That crack right there makes this hood worth more to me than a nice looking hood would be because that was hilarious to watch and it's a memory for both me and the little guy, whether he likes it or not. Now let's keep working on this. My plan now is to go along and clip all these little tabs off. In case you're wondering, I have had the safety squints activated. So that's keeping my eyes safe. I should put some safety glasses on, but that would be too smart. I got the little ears trimmed off there and everything's looking pretty good. Now, if a guy wanted to, you could run some mesh over it and then glue on top of that. But we're gonna leave this and see how it does as an experiment. You know, what's the worst that could happen? Our hood cracks? That already happened, so we might as well see if these staples can really hold up to, you know, this job. Now, this is on a twin, so there's less vibration too. On a single, I'd probably, you know, double, triple, quadruple do it. Make sure that's secure because they vibrate a lot more. We're going to do basically the same thing on this hood, except we're going to use the hot iron and really work some mesh in there since it is on the hinge and that's kind of a high stress point. If you're wondering how this is going, it's going great. One would think I'd be able to get this, but sometimes things don't go as you plan. Well, it looks like this hood is completely broken off. That's great. I knew it was bad. This is pretty bad. Remove the hood tie cable thing. All right, there we go. As you can see, this crack is pretty nasty. Now, I think my game plan is gonna be clean this surface up, get her cleaner at least, and then staple this into place, and then hot iron over that real good. Get some deep penetration. Now I did use the mesh on this in a hot gun before. I didn't have the staple gun at that time, but I didn't get very deep. So you got about a quarter inch plastic to melt into. So I'm gonna try to use that whole quarter inch because this is, you know, a stress point. Obviously it's broken. So let's get to her. It's not gonna do itself. This one could be a hard piece to do. It's going to take some finagling. I can tell you that right now. Oh, there it just popped right into place. Whew. 
Luckily, I somehow still have my little corner piece for this bolt hole. I'm gonna try to get that in there too. Why not just sweeten the pot? I don't want a hood with a chip in it. I just want a hood with some cracks in it. You can see how all that goopy stuff goes on there. It's not the greatest, but I guess it's better than nothing. Let's get the hot iron out and start really doing something. All right. These things take a while to heat up. They're pretty cheap. We're going to speed up the heating process a little bit. That should get her a little hotter. Oh yeah, now it really goes in there. We got this hood patched back together. It's not very pretty, but I did do a patch on that side a couple years ago and it's held so far. So, I'm not sure. That is a major stress point. I'm assuming it's gonna break again and then we'll probably get the big guns out, heat gun, torch, and really fix her up. But for now, we're gonna try this and see what happens. It should get me through the rest of the year and maybe most of next year. Hard to say, maybe it'll last forever. I kinda doubt that. There you have it. These Kadooey lands are ready to hit the snowy trails once again. Now, it's probably only a matter of time until we crack another plastic hood. So if you or anyone you know have a better idea or method or technique to fixing plastic hoods, leave a comment below and let me know. Because you guys collectively have a lot more brain power and knowledge, years even, over me. So don't be afraid to share it. But anyways, thank you for watching Rotten and Forgotten. We'll catch you on the next one.